Uh, I'd like to welcome everybody to the 2016 Lake St. Clair Fishery Workshop. I'm Justin, I'm the Michigan Sea Grant. If you don't know much about Sea Grant, I'm not going to tell you anything more than uh, I work for Michigan State University. The Sea Grant is split between Michigan State University Extension and the University of Michigan. So at least in one spot in the world, we play nice together and we get our federal funding and oversight from NOAA. So Sea Grant, we're a little bit of work. So, going in and out. Can you hear me without it? Yeah. Yep. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, we just tried that. Apparently, it doesn't work as well as we thought it would. So, uh, the main reason why we want to get together tonight, it, uh, it allows us to get some of the professionals that you guys want to hear, want to be able to interact, have those questions. Give them you know, a platform to interact with you guys. So hopefully we're all here in good faith to learn, listen, and kind of figure out what's going on on Lake St. Clair. So real quick, I'm just going to go over the agenda. This might change a little bit. I think uh, uh, Noah's speaker might be stuck in traffic. She was coming over from uh, Ann Arbor this evening, so hopefully she's still safe <laughs> on the road. Um, so she might be here by 9 o'clock. So. <laughs> So, again, uh, we're just going to audible. If you want a workshop flyer, they're over there. I've written enough, enough out so we keep the course and the um, Again, we're with the uh, Michigan State University Extension and Sea Grant. Just want to make sure that we let everybody know, no matter who you are or what you are, you're all welcome to be here tonight. So, thank you for coming. And I'd like to thank the, the people that are here, the, the speakers. Uh, sportsman's director for letting, uh, letting us crash at your place this evening. This looks like it's a venue that's working uh, real well so far. So, um, I guess without any further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Jerry Santoro. And he's going to be talking uh, about some of the things that Macomb County is uh, doing in uh, Macomb County uh, at the county level uh, with access and some natural resource stuff. Okay, uh, it's great to be here. I'm coming from Jeremy if I'm talking with Daniel Boyd. Okay. Um, I'm sort of standing here, so I sort of know where I'm at with my slide. But, uh, actually, it's, uh, it's great to be here to talk to the fishing community. It's very important to uh, all of us in this area uh, realizing just how important Lake St. Clair really is. Uh, to the you know, fishing communities and remind nationwide registered as a, a pretty major fishery. And because of that, we've been involved from the planning and economic development uh, end of things uh, to sort of assist in however we can to provide tools uh, for programming uh, that will be accessible for the fishing community as well as uh, respond to some of the issues that, you know, how land is developed to make fishing more accommodating, I guess. And um, so that's a lot of the, the reason why we're involved. I'm just going to try to help like one more time. All right. And while we're doing that, I just want to let you know I did bring um, a map. It's called Circle of the Lake. You can probably see these signs around um, Jefferson Avenue and uh, all the way around the lake. So Lake uh, St. Clair County will be putting these in. Uh, we also have Bird Point Community put these in, in last year, working with the city of Detroit, and then um, our counterparts over in Ontario are also looking at putting the site. Uh, sort of came about as an opportunity to get people to really uh, learn about this. Uh, you know, we've got this beautiful part of the Great Lakes right here in southeast Michigan, and a lot of people have no connection not just to the lake, but to the Great Lakes in general. So that was part of our purpose. So we got 100 destinations around the lake, and uh, I invite you to take them. I'll leave some here with uh, Sportsman Direct. Is that and This is the, the map. There's a map in here, and you can do it by boat or by car. So it's sort of a cool opportunity. Take as many as you want. If you want more, get a hold of me, and I can get you boxes of them. <laughs> so, um, so we have a thing that's called the Blue Economy Initiative. Has anyone ever even heard of it? You're the governmental people sort of have, but it's um, Blue Economy Initiative is basically just 
recognizing that our uh, freshwater resources have a lot to do with our local economy. Uh, it's about environmental stewardship, economic development, quality of life. When you have all three of those in place, then you have a sustainable place that people want to stay and invest in. And that's partly what we do with the new economy programming. You can see we did a vision based on our 2012. Uh, we brought in about two to three hundred people from private sector, from businesses, so on and so forth, and developed a plan. This is a geospatial representation of the plan. Uh, that came about, and then if you look at the right, we just finished this last year the Lake St. Clair Access Plan. Uh, the governor has a um, uh, authority on water, and that water uh, basically states that the area anywhere around the Great Lakes in Michigan, they want to make the access to the Great Lakes at least once every five miles for the public. Uh, however, between Port Huron and Row where we have a higher population base, the goal is to actually get access every linear, you know, at least an average of every mile, and to not go more than five miles without access. So uh, that's been my goal. And, uh, it's the biggest part of the Blue Economy Initiative it is people lack the access. So I've been working with a lot, collaborating with a lot of different agencies and trying to make that happen, and I'm going to explain a little bit about that. We also introduced a, a coastal pavement trail a couple of years ago. We were the first county within uh, Michigan to have a coastal pavement trail that's going to be circling the entire Great Lakes. Um, and yet, uh, the Canadian counterparts are just signing on to the idea, uh, but that's sort of going as well. Um, this is the, the representation of the map for the coastal pavement trail. Uh, this is the Clinton River also as part of our, um, our planning effort. We had Believe it or not, we have some of the best whitewater raft, or not rafting, whitewater uh, paddling in the area between Rochester and Utica. Um, especially when there's high water, it actually can be dangerous. But um, other areas, from like Utica South, um, there's it's wonderful, it's family friendly most of it, and we're working on getting that cleaned up. The large woody debris programming in place, and uh, we're in the last year or two uh, with that. Um, this right here is a uh, pictogram. Shows uh, the importance of the fishery, uh, Lake St. Clair, and it's, uh, you know, it's uh, connecting water. water. Yes, to how important our region is um, for the uh, for the of water resources. If you look at this, this represents the fishing um, pressure that basically means how many fishing trips are initiated through uh, this area. And if you have like Lake St. Lake St. Clair, St. Clair River, Detroit River, and Western Lake Erie, you represent 46% of all of the fishing pressure in Michigan Great Lakes waters. It's pretty amazing if you look at that. Uh, it goes to show you how important Lake St. Clair really is. This right here, we just finished this internal study. Uh, we always knew that um, Lake St. Clair and Macomb County had a lot of boat slips, right? And we had no idea how many of those. Uh, we heard there was like, like three or four thousand nautical uh, miles. We did the same up in you know, the river area. And, however, when we did the boat slip analysis, we discovered that there's over 15,000 boat slips just in Macomb County let alone all the dry dock storage, which ends up being a couple thousand more <coughs> And that doesn't even include a lot of the area that you're going to see while we're people can tie up the boat and go the boat. So we're probably pushing towards 20,000 uh, locations for uh, recreational boating and fishing boating. So it's pretty amazing uh, the statistics we got here locally. Uh, so we're talking about how do we, how do we get uh, Look at those areas with the highlighted purple. Those areas we did special studies on to determine how we can best uh, allocate uh, public space to uh, lake access. And uh, we did we found 19 spots along the river, or along the lake, I'm sorry, where uh, access could be improved. And uh, so we're looking at implementing as many of those as we can. 
just submitted a trust fund grant to develop this park. A philanthropic donation to the Weber Foundation allowed the township to purchase the property last year, and now we're looking at developing it um, in this manner as well. Some conservation efforts on there and some restoration efforts uh, with some of the coastal areas, um, the shoreline restoration, as well as the uh, wooded wetlands there. Uh, we moved on to Harley Henson. We're pretty close uh, to that. Um, that particular location um, has $2 million from the GLRI uh, attached to it. It's undergoing restoration efforts right now. Uh, that is also going to have a shoreline restoration of almost like half a linear mile. Uh, if you take both sides of that point and you restore those, then that becomes um, potential fish habitat as well. And um, it's actually one of the more premier waterfront locations. Uh, anywhere in this related so oh and also to develop uh, potentially a fishing pier there as well so um that's the that's close up of some of the areas that can be restored and then we go down to the spillway which is really close to here we have two going out <laughs> anyway um the Clint river spillway is the dnr boat launch and that is actually one of the busiest uh, boat launches. I know from the DNR uh, that runs the boat launches uh, here, but the, what I understand is uh, between Harley Edison, Selfridge, and this one are like some of the three busiest boat launch locations in the state of Michigan that have more you know, opportunity for simultaneous boat launches. So, um, so that's what we have going there. We're assisting uh, Harrison Township right at the end of Cracker Road. I think that area is a TIFID district, which will allow for that area to be redeveloped and cleaned up a little bit with sidewalks, connections for all the voting community to then utilize the restaurants. Um, and um, they can get a hotel in there as well as a long walkable fishing, or not a fishing pier, but a pier, but like a municipal pier where you can rent boats, uh, so on and so on, so forth off of that. And, and also expanding the uh, downtown area that can be developed there as an urbanist development with even some uh, cruise boats and stuff like that. So now we look at the, that area and they look at expanding that on either side and we sort of assisted them with just doing some general graphics ideas, you know, to sort of put ideas out there. And we will continue to work with the state um, and here's the township. On this, but putting up more funds there too. Uh, but if you look at the bulkhead uh, that we'd like to create, or we'd like to create a memorial, uh, if we can get, um, we're working on getting a sanctuary status uh, for the sunken um, settlements underneath Lake St. Clair. Most people know about Belvedere and then in North River Road, the community that went underwater in the 1850s. There's also an outpost of uh, one of Gabriel Richard's missions, right about the border of between Harrison Township and St. Clair Shore. It was called St. Felicity. And there was a church there, a parsonage, cemetery, and that is now underwater, including the cemetery. So uh, we're working very hard on getting that all uh, registered with the state first, and then we're going to see if we can go even higher up with the federal state, maybe putting some type of memorial right within the downtown Harrison Township. Um, Donovan Mile is a beast of its own, as we all know. Um, but uh, they are also looking at how do they open that up to the public. Because really, if you don't own a boat, you have a boat with one of their, uh, you know, one of their marinas there, you might not even go. Well, they have good restaurants, right? A lot of good restaurants, actually. So how do we make sense of this? So we also got some funds this last year uh, through the Michigan Resilient like Cities program. And we looked at how can we assist St. Clair Shores in reallocating some of their properties or some of the private properties for business development that will allow for uh, public access. Uh, it's quite a scene to look at this. It's a pretty prominent location. And uh, Blossom Beach would be one area where that beach, once the Coast Guard station got in there, that beach was useless because it was closed off from uh, water exchange and it became too polluted with all the ducking and everything in there to even utilize. So 
our suggestion was close it down because you're not going to get rid of the Coast Guard station, but maybe redevelop it as a coastal habitat location for fish. So that's actually what we're looking at. Um, and this is one of the plans to redevelop that. Um, we include the blossom leaf thin, um, and I'm looking at potentially where a small boutique hotel, the department of study that went on to that location, and uh, further down the mountain a mile above midpoint, we're looking at how could that be redeveloped right around the uh, Bolton Fish area or Beach Grill, whatever you prefer to call it. It will be reopening as another name <laughs> fairly soon. Um, but maybe an amphitheater right on the water. Our goal was to release the allowing people to get down to the water to walk around and having some shots and so on. And this is one of the images that came up with a wayfinding effort uh, to do a new urbanist development with like rooftop uh, dining so that you can see the water from even from Jefferson Avenue and so on. And um, this is actually going to be presented to a group of investors at some point in the next year or so. Um, and then we have the 90 mile boat launch. Uh, right now, that's sort of about the limits. It's the public works, uh, Chapton Station. But possibly in the future, we could look at how could that actually be developed for public use. Maybe allow for the big uh, parking lot area to store uh, boats, uh, winter storage, and then uh, utilize the lake side of it, maybe for um, you know additional uses as well as doing some coastal restoration there as well. And then, of course, the very southern end of the county, most people don't realize this, but the Eleanor and Hudson Ford home at Grosse Pointe Shores is actually in Macomb County. So, a little section of Grosse Pointe Shores is in Macomb. And this happens to be part of it. And there's an effort on their end to do some shoreline restoration or some ecological benefit uh, program uh, through that foundation. Um, so we are working with them to see how that might come about in the next, uh, next while. And then um, an overall strategy that we have in the county, uh, south end of Macomb County, southeast Oakland County, and the area of here, uh, Detroit, are all, uh, was considered the most heavily, densely populated area in southeast Michigan. And um, it, it's pretty amazing. Um, we're lacking a lot of tree cover because of uh, our flush home disease and the act for a lot of the communities went and brought out their sewers and separated them. So you're seeing that very sewer separated from their storm sewer, which is the right thing to do, but it also eliminated a lot of street trees. So we're, we're initiating a program starting May 9th. We just got a grant from the U.S. Forestry Service with the MDNR um, to create an urban forestry project um, to, to develop, to allow for the increase in right tree right place so that it will help clean the water, um, reduce energy bills, improve real estate value, as well as um, alleviate a little bit of flooding. So there's multi-purposes why it should happen, and we're the area that's lacking the most in southeast Michigan as far as tree cover, so we're making a stringent effort. I think south of the Clinton River in Macomb County is going to be you know, the right priority area for that program. And that's all I got. So I'm going to just open it up for questions at this point. I know it's a lot of information, uh, but a lot's going on, so I'm happy to say. If you have questions, I'm going to try to move this mic around too, sure. so everybody can hear. Yeah. Sorry about the mic, we're still trying to get it worked out. Okay. I have two questions. Okay. Number one, what's the current status of the Bolton Transparent like how these public access sites as you increase them up down the shore, they have motor access so they're pretty And the South End Lake uh, St. Clair, uh, um, from like Crocker Down, you know, where the spillway launch is, you don't see a lot of opportunity at this point for, for small people. It's just there for people that aren't residents. <laughs> Well, the city of St. Clair Shores, um, I think that's about three or four years ago, opened up their nine-mile launch to the public for the first time ever. 
so much more boat traffic to come to that area to visit their restaurants. And they're getting so crowded now on the weekends that they're wondering how they can expand. I mean, there's, there's, you know what I'm saying? We have this issue about getting out on the Lake St. Clair. Um, and we're trying to assist with that wherever we can. As far as any other locations, uh, nothing's really on the radar except for the DNR Cups. And the whole purpose for them to wanting to expand was to double the amount of boat ramps at least at that location at the top. And I, still, I know that you said some of them were, you know, like up in New Baltimore where it's been village thing for a long time, but you, your focus is at least to try and keep us where the general public can get in there. You don't have to be right there. That would be our goal would be for the general public. Um, a lot of local governments have their own parks. They've not accepted DNR funds to develop the parks of the trust fund. If they're not going to allow for the old, you know, general public. So that's great because it puts a stipulation on any new additional funds that they might receive that now protects the general citizenry. And I understand that the local government wants to open a park for their own residents. That's a great thing to have. And they have every right to do that. I'm not mixing that. I'm just saying that they can't use state funds to develop those parks if they're not. Did I answer your question? Yes, yeah, sure. Yeah. I was under the impression that the crop was not finished. Water bought it from that old marine that was there, and it's still property, and it's still a proper one that is not finished water. It's not finished. We're just in the beginning stages. Um, I don't even know where the DNR is with the uh, understanding. You didn't mention that on your plan. No, it is part of the plan, but that's the vision. Uh, they went forward and did a trust fund grant application this last year to look at that property uh, adjacent to their existing place. They already own it. Uh, they do not, they already own the cutoff location, the boat launch there. They're looking to expand. They will not be able to expand if they are not able to get additional property. But there's still some property next to the property launch that you already own. I don't believe that's true, but I might be wrong. But I don't think that's being uh, part of the uh, discussions there. Admiral. Yes. Admiral. Oh, the Admiral, yeah. That might be, right. that might be what they're looking at, yes. Okay. The state is, is looking yeah, at. Yeah, because that depends on the state of the bonds. Oh, that's true. Um, I see what you're saying. Yes, there is a, there, but they don't want to do any expansion on there unless they know they can do the whole thing. You know what I mean? They don't want to start putting resources towards something that's only going to be, you know, half completed even when they're done. They want to make sure that they can move that boat launch and it make it, uh, because there's some, I think it's a lot of backwash there. Do you guys ever use it? There's a lot of logs, you know, come up in there. There's environmental issues with that, that it's a constant hassle for the DNR to keep that site clean. So they want to move it so that it will be facing downstream. Well, like that happened. Well, and I don't know, but I mean, the CNR would probably want to have happen in the next year or two, but there are other negotiations, and I have no idea where they're at with that. So, but no, that was a good point. Yeah. Anything else? Okay, well, thanks for having me.